వెల్ ఈ రోజు రేడియో సిటీ నైన్టీ వన్ పాయింట్ వన్ ఎఫ్ఎం లో ఇట్లా స్పెషల్ అకేషన్ ఎందుకంటే నేనైతే బుజ్జిని చూసినాం బుజ్జి ఎంత సూపర్ ఎక్సైటింగ్ గా బుజ్జి బుజ్జిగా అనిపించిందా దాని పవర్ అంత ఎంత కాదు సూపర్ ఎక్సైటింగ్ అనిపించింది అనమాట ఆన్ గ్రౌండ్ లో దాన్ని చూడడం దాన్ని సృష్టించిన కర్త కర్మ ఈ ఇంజనీర్స్ మన ముందున్నారు అండ్ వి హ్ సాద్ హర్ష అండ్ విష్ణు వెల్కమ్ టు రేడియో సిటీ నైన్టీ వన్ పాయింట్ వన్ ఎఫ్ఎం వన్స్ అగైన్ వెల్ విత్ ఆల్ దిస్ గ్రేట్ క్రియేషన్ సాద్ గారు ఐ వాంట్ నో ఫ్రమ్ యూ ఫస్ట్ Of course, uh, all engineers. Little, little about your background. I'm not, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a designer. Asha's the only designer. Okay. I did say on stage that I'm so, an engineer. Too. Go ahead. Sorry. So, I'm a mechanical engineer and uh, I worked in research and development uh, for, for a few years. I had my own workshop. I was working on my workshop also. So, after which I quit and I started building my own stuff. So, I st- I'm sort of like in between an artist and an engineer. so i started off with metal sculptures and i used to make sculptures out of recycled metal and i got into blacksmithing and forging knives and damascus steel and yeah and i used to do build projects of my own at my own uh, <coughs> workshop i used to build motorcycles and all and from there we got contacted by uh, vajanti movies priyanka and yeah we got into the movie business from there so so few yeah. things about j motorsport so G- gm i mean uh, i are the guys who've done the majority of work in building buji they are a coimbatore based company and so i just wore that t-shirt to represent them here because they've put in a lot of hard work to making buji possible the three of us uh, we we were sort of mon- monitoring the project trying to collaborate between the different companies that are involved but the most of the engineering and all has been done by gm motorsports and yeah hats off to them for pulling off such a such a difficult project and in such a short amount of time yeah so vishnu they say that they have put in efforts but you look like you have put in effort <laughs> <laughs> that should be seen in your eyes i think for the for the past 40 days getting buji off the finish line vishnu has put in the most effort uh, we were in coimbatore sorry vishnu if i'm answering for you okay, sorry. we were in please, coimbatore please in 40 please. plus degrees doing track testing and uh, working uh, night shifts day shifts and all and buji uh, sorry vishnu was there throughout Yeah, you can. Yeah, uh, your background. Yeah, so I've been an automotive guy since when I can remember, since childhood. I did my engineering in automobiles uh, right after school. After that, I went into a design school at MIT Pune, did automotive design over there. And then since then, I've been working on my own for a few uh, companies and startups and stuff and a few private clients also, building a few vehicles, some engineering tasks, some design tasks. balancing it out here and there and that's when i saw actually i saw an instagram post from saad so saad i've known for a while now because his brother and me we were classmates at mit and i've known him since before this project itself so yeah that post came up and then i was like yeah damn this is like a dream <laughs> job dude like building sci-fi vehicles as like imagine a, as a kid you would be drawing it randomly everywhere it's not even proper cars or bikes or anything but getting to design one and build one and drive one <laughs> for real in life is is the dream come true the dream come true wonderful so harsha yeah you're calm subtle but you build a beast <laughs> i'm usually not the calm one so i'm the calm one no 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 so i am an architect primarily i studied architecture in hyderabad then i thought i wanted to do something more interesting more towards design like core design so i found this amazing course called industrial design I did my master's in industrial design in the US and I worked there for about 4 years developing products of different scale but my heart was always in automobiles I used to drive cars drive motorcycles draw them design them like Vishnu says right on your notebooks through childhood it was a fascination for me but I couldn't ever get into automobile design it was it, it's very competitive so I thought through industrial design at some point I'll end up you know just let's just start my career in something design right and then I got a visa to stay in the US but I decided to come back to India my heart was back here I want to do something here came back uh, within a few months I saw this post by YJ and they saying they're looking for industrial designers I'm like movies and industrial design don't go together I was just curious to see what they're up to so I approached them they came visited my workshop and that's where it clicked we went we spoke to Nagi immediately it started off by designing smaller things we were designing a bunch of props in the movie without getting into details of what they are 
and by the time Saad existed, like he was working okay. on the <laughs> existed at IJNT, but I didn't know. Okay, I didn't yeah. know there was such a collaboration going to happen, right? For six months, we didn't cross our paths. Yeah, we were working on different parts of the movie. Yeah, he was fully into the vehicles. I was fully into the gadgets. Oh, you guys what? not just exclusively worked on Bujji. There are several other things that you have worked on. Okay. A lot more props that we worked together okay. on. Yeah. In fact, uh, there was a journey to find a name for our team. That's a joke that I'll tell yeah, you soon. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll tell, we'll we'll tell, tell you soon. Yeah. But it started off as individuals, right? Just, just Saad and me, he was working on the vehicle part. I was working on the gadgets part. And then at one point, Priyanka Dath had put us together in the same room saying, hey, there's a project called Buji. It's a big one. It's a main character and we need to work on it. Then the first time we saw each other was on a video call. The immediate day we met, we had 3D printed Buji on a small scale to figure out what to do with this. How do we build this? So then within the first yeah, I mean, no, for bo- both of us at least, uh, both of us were not at all involved in the movie field. And then yeah. we were dealing with uh, art directors, we were dealing with production uh, timelines and all of that. And we were both like trying to figure it out on the own. But when we both met each other, we got together and realized, okay, now we have somebody to sort of on the uh, same discuss page. with, like that speaks the same language as me, as him, yeah. and that sort of gave us a confidence to start building a team of engineers. To because we, uh, from an engineering perspective, we know what it takes for a prop to be built, and especially when it's a sci-fi movie, it's a prop, it's not a chair, it's a gadget. So it has to perform on set. It has to be dependable. It, batteries have to be charged. It has to be convenient to use. And if the suppose somebody kicks it or throws it, it should be robust and also there's engineering involved in these kind of props. That is when we got Harsha and I got together, started building a team. We interviewed Vishnu and. I think the moment we spoke to him, we knew that he's the guy. We knew that he has to be part of us. Like, yeah. we, we thought we'll form a trio to get this forward. And then we interviewed more people. And we formed a team of about nine, eight, nine people, I believe, eight, at one people. point. Yeah. But then we were dealing with more than one vehicle. So we were building multiple vehicles. <laughs> we were building multiple gadgets. So it was a storm and chaos of doing many things at once. But we enjoyed it thoroughly. So you guys met each other's budgies before building budgies. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's exactly what happened. So what does it take to build a budgie? Mm. From, uh, as a, a designer perspective, we'll come. Designer perspective. So the first call was how do we do this, right? Because the art department at the movie industry, they're amazing at building, uh, you know, uh, architectural stuff like temples and monuments and whatnot. They do it overnight. You'll be amazed as to how great they look. Yeah, and how realistic yeah. they look. When it comes to something more sophisticated like gadgets and vehicles, then they don't have the prowess or the route, you know, the guidance to do it. So that is where we fit in. We wanted to, you know, guide them to make designs, drawings, 3D models to make, help them to make these things. So uh, yeah. if I may interrupt, yeah. uh, was there any prompt given to you by the director that it should look like this or it should perform like this or design should be such? So the design of Buji, yeah. how it looks and what, what it does in the movie, it came down to us directly from Haisu Wang. So Haisu is a uh, designer in Hollywood. He's done uh, the spaceship for Guardians of the Galaxy. He's done the Batman car, the, the Robert Pattinson one. The exoskeletons from Avatar. Exoskeletons from Avatar. He's done those designs. So Nagi and Haisu had a long, like I think a six month or seven month long discussion. And they Nitin, Nitin Zihani. With Nitin. Yeah. Where all three of them were going back and forth and designing Buji and everything. And once it was designed, it came came down to us. <laughs> and they, they told us, now you have to build it. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah. Yeah. That's and how it literally it started. came down to us as a CAD model. Yeah. I mean, without getting into the details, it was a super heavy file. It had like some it, 4,500 parts within <laughs> a file. And it was dumb to us. And yeah. we had our normal computers, right? It's not even opening in our computer. I'm like, what to do with this? Yeah, it would take us like two or three hours just to open the 3D model and take a yeah. look at the individual parts of Buji. And, and that's a good thing because that's the amount of detail I had put into this model. Yeah. Every screw and nut and bolt was accounted for. So if you, if you build it as it is, it would look very detailed. You didn't have to add anything to it. So we spent, a, I think the first month was just deciphering the CAD model and making it accessible to other people. So that's what we did. That's what it started. Then the second important question was, how do we do this? Are we building a dummy version? Are we building a thing that moves? I think we're all inclined to make a Buji that moves from the beginning. In the beginning, yes. We yeah. all wanted to make a Buji that moves. So there was a lot of brainstorming and at, with the resources and I think the experience that we had at that time, this was about three years back, we 
we were looking at something that we can like a ready made car that we can put buji on top of customize so yeah, customize it and all so we had we, we got a little remote controlled car we put the buji proportions on it we were doing test runs with that we made a full scale poster of buji put it up in the production room and try to fit in a mahindra the car mainly like, mainly this was because no one could imagine the scale of yeah, this everybody saw thing, this yeah. on so the computer Come. as as engineers we knew that the wheel is massive and yeah. but uh, for the rest of the team i think yeah. uh, the movie team it was a little difficult to understand so what harsha did is he just got a 1 is to 1 scale poster of buji put it up and said like this is yeah. how big it is then they came is. a student they like oh this <laughs> is long this is longer than an innova car because they didn't yeah. know how big it is yeah so the first thing was you know making them understand the scale of the vehicle that was a nice journey and then yeah we did this design exploration of design what? exploration with remote control cars with uh, actual cars we got a jeep we thought we'll retrofit the body of buji around it and then we were working on a miniature also another member of our team rakesh he was helping us build a miniature thinking that we can do some of the stunts in the movie with the miniature and but also help us understand the dynamics yeah understand the, the dynamics because nobody knows how this car sort of uh, vehicle will move it's not a regular vehicle not just the way it looks but the way the wheels are oriented the way it's supposed to move uh, it's not it's not any like anything anyone seen so all of that the only way you can learn it is to start building prototypes testing it out and see how it moves trial and how and trial and error yeah and then do it so this is for vishnu and sad since you guys have tested in every possible way this is built and it is robust and it is uh, it has taken several tests with respect to tensile strength a lot of other things and uh, other thing so is it a pos- since let's look at it as a prototype is it a possibility uh, that we can bring this onto the streets to make it a full fledged commercial vehicle or a uh, <coughs> vehicle somebody could le- uh, so drive we so we were actually having a discussion about this while we were thinking about the road shows and everything that we wanted buji to go in but the major factor that uh, is a concern or stops it from happening is the fact that the width of the vehicle it's actually so wide that uh, we had to get one of the biggest trucks available and make then customize add, it add about 4 to... feet over that just to fit buji in so imagine yeah. that being on the road means it will be taking more than one lane just <laughs> when it's turning <laughs> and plus the commotion and everything it'll cl- it'll yeah. cause so also it j- it just simply doesn't fit in any category that you can put it in so that you can make it road legal or give it a number plate so to say it's <laughs> almost like trying to run a mining truck on the road it just doesn't fit yeah so yes. yeah long story short unfortunately it cannot be commercialized for sale i mean it works you can drive it you can uh, do donuts with it you can break it and everything but it's just way too big to be yeah just active. the size as long as you have a private uh, track of your own yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'll ask the most Yeah, common Indian question that comes mileage mileage kitna kitna yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you have to be uh, willing to understand yes. the whole kilowatt language right now we have shifting shift yeah. EVs right. yeah, mileage is no more kilometers surprisingly efficient yeah it's yeah, surprisingly good mileage it for the size and the kind I'm of stuff 1 kilowatt mein 2 uh, kilometer is <laughs> 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 kilo, so you have to do that efficient, efficient. Yeah. Yeah. you're tempting people to more to get it on streets but yeah it, it's not coming to as of soon i mean indians they banana that he will be efficient <laughs> <laughs> well uh, when i have seen such sci-fi uh, vehicles from my childhood i remember bumblebee sometimes i i look at uh, uh, the tra- all the vehicles in the transformers and we have batmobile these are the things that we are looked at and we fantasize one day we'll we'll be building or looking at some vehicles futuristic vehicles could be like this what's your fantasy or uh, as a vehicle that you have among them i think definitely the christopher nolan's batmobile the tumbler i've been fascinated about from a long time i watched every random every video on the internet about it about the way it's built in fact uh, this was not for inspiration but we were actually looking at how it was built while we were doing buji also to see how they did it right but the key factor was it was a, a regular car so gasoline engine and what not ours was an ev but then there were some takeaways about how they were doing testing without any panels and all those things but for me hands down the tumbler is the vehicle i'm fascinated by so sir me i i never really had a fantasy car or anything because i'm not really into movies but once we started uh, researching for the project to figure out how to go about it and we started researching about the tumbler i think the approach to making that vehicle sort of uh, made me respect the director made me respect the engineers behind it and i think that's mine but 
that's mine only because it's there but i think now bujji is my favorite one <laughs> i mean uh, smart ass <laughs> <laughs> but come on dude i mean of the, course uh, i think it beats the back batman tumbler by by yeah, by a mile i mean you can't really compare it. <laughs> it's yeah. not sustainable you, you can't compare it. both of them yeah, actually there's no comparison yeah there's no whatsoever. comparison the only comparison can be made is because that's the closest anybody can compare it to like yeah, that's yeah. the thing so we clearly tell people it's not nolan it's not batmobile this buji is a vehicle by itself built it's a vehicle above because itself. there's so many engineering marvels that even if yeah. you think about the batmobile it's a very conventional vehicle it except for not having a front axle otherwise it's a very conventional vehicle yeah. ours is unconventional in every, in every way so buji is best yeah <laughs> you answered for him okay. <laughs> so, again no like i have i have i was I'm also not like i have i am into movies but not like where i can call myself a fanatic or something i don't know a lot but tumblr definitely i've always seen as a kid but also as a kid i've been a lot into animes So I watched a lot of these animes as a kid, like Mobile Suit Gundam. That's that's quite a many. So all these animes is what is sort of closer uh, is what I feel to that Bujji represents rather than something like the Tumblr or anything, because of again as they said the unconventionality of the whole vehicle itself. So the first time I remember when these guys were interviewing me and then they uh, showed me to what I'm getting myself into. So it was actually those pictures and drawings from all the animes coming out. Like, Holy shit! Now I'm gonna have to make this. <laughs> so yeah, man, like the. It, Bat- Batmobile, like the Tumblr, is crazy. It is very nice in its rights, but it doesn't hold a candle to Bujji. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this three years of journey, I want you to answer this. Uh, I, this shares the coordination between you. What can Bujji do? One thing at a time. Uh, like what do you mean? What can? What all can Bujji do other than driving? I think it can inspire. Clearly, <laughs> inspire. That's it. It can put a smile on anybody's face. A kid, yeah. an adult, an old person. It's gonna be fascinating for anybody. I guess you haven't seen it yet for live, right? Once you see <laughs> it, you will realize. Oh yeah, the yeah. it yeah. talks to you. The Arab scene. It literally talks to you <laughs> when it's driving. Yeah. The way it's driving, it's 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 got an expression on its whole body language when it's taking a turn, when it's stopping. It does so many things. It 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 does so much drama while doing the simplest <laughs> of tasks that that itself to watch is something that is awe inspiring. Absolutely. Like automobiles in general invoke this feeling that they're alive, right? Because they move, they invoke emotions in you. So that's the reason people get connected to cars and bikes, and not a sofa or a laptop. And this vehicle, especially, it makes it squeaks, and exaggerates. Moves. So exaggerates that's a good it. point because the, I mean yeah. the way it moves is so unconventional that it feels so it feels alive, alive. And it feels uh, alive, and it feels it like at, at this moment in time, it feels like a character. F- Truly, yeah. that is actually moving, and just it ne- just needs a bougie voice <laughs> to happen all the time. But otherwise, yeah, such a beast. Why such a cute name, Bougie? It's that's it's the most cutest name yeah, that we can. That only answer. one person on earth can answer in that time. <laughs> yeah, because we had the same question for him. But <laughs> man, do I understand now? <laughs> it's the most approachable name, right? Yeah, for the for its behavior, we find it cute. Maybe that it, I, I think it has to do more with the character in the movie also. So if you've seen anything in the teaser, that will give an idea of what Bujji is, this playfulness and all. But again, there's more to be seen on the big screen. I think that means it was say it's sort of gentle giants always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very. Endearing. But the running joke is that it's Bujji, but actually it is the opposite of it's anything but Bujji. But Bujji, <laughs> that's the running joke. So the teaser that came out for uh, the, all the invitation that came out for Bujji. <laughs> Uh, showed a little part which said um, she the buji goes to nagsar and it says nobody's uh, sticking to the timeline yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the poster it's good it's all good jab like, at himself <laughs> <laughs> also sorry if i can take you back to why buji in 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 a way if you see the vehicle the initial vehicle that haisu had done was kind of sharp and edgy and quite bold but then we did we made a whole list of changes to the original design that was submitted by haisu working with nitin zehani and everything and now if you see the vehicle the kind of softness it has the kind of uh, roundness uh, roundness it has and the kind of emotion that it displays it's sort of inviting and that whole gentleness of the vehicle is very much there in the design of the vehicle itself So again, we can <laughs> say why Bujji, but once you see it, you you'll more than understand why Bujji. So there's yeah. another thing where for people who follow all Prabhas Gari movies, uh, one movie is that where uh, he played Bujji Garu, and I thought this is a derivative of 
bujigadu but i don't know uh, I, i don't know i don't know again we also don't we are know. also just making uh, i mean uh, yeah. there is a good association of that word with mr prabhas right to word bujji so i don't know what see i i believe it's nagi's idea to name it bujji so i don't know yeah. what clicked and what inspired him so that's a question the actual <laughs> story is just going to get wrong on person yeah only one more <laughs> <person>. we'll <laughs> get him on board <laughs> but i have a segue question for you yeah since you said in invitation they said it's buji brain and the body will come out what were you expecting and what did you see and what changed after this i thought of a robot so okay. as simple as that like uh-huh. so I, I, when i saw the, just the head i thought it's going to be a, a something like a wally Okay. Oh, okay. As okay, good okay. as Wally. Oh, the name is Bucci. Okay. okay. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's structured in the small yeah, way. Yeah. And when I saw the tires, I was like, <laughs> "Is it a? Uh, is, it, is the whole head going to be uh, <laughs> fixed into something like Transformers? Yeah, yeah. And the heart is small. And I, all I could imagine was as good as a Wally. And this came out. <laughs> this came yeah. out. And so, what be, was your reaction when you saw it? You know, break through that wall. I went to Zunker. Seriously, <laughs> I mean, like this is one of a kind that we could. Speaking of the tire, <laughs> <laughs> as we're sitting inside the tire, <laughs> yeah, yeah. two people could fit, uh, fit into that. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. if we could speak about the technicalities, I heard this is a hubless tire. Hubless tire. How does that work? Is, is it, has it come practically? I mean, what I, what we are looking at is it is hubless, right? Yeah, so, yeah. It is it is a hubless tire, uh-huh. but. Uh, practically in the sense that there are concept cars with it but we haven't really seen anything that's driven on the road true, with a, with true. a hubless wheel point, i mean yeah. you can see motorcycles yeah. with hubless wheels but this is a massive car with a hubless rim uh, exactly. wheel well, so how challenging was it i mean uh, since it's been a protocol for cars it's, and now it's, it's all I, reality it was so we, i mean with the engineering team jm we we really had to go f- like stand our ground because they were intent on getting the size of the hubless smaller and smaller and smaller so that it looks so that it's more feasible to manufacture but nagi wants it bigger and bigger and bigger and our team was trying to sort of find the middle ground <laughs> they'll be happy and nagi yeah. will also be happy so ge- yeah, getting it's big enough to yeah, where it doesn't break where it doesn't break and at the same time it should look cool so but, but on a broader was, term i would say uh, the hubless wheel is by far the biggest engineering feat in the entire vehicle like i think it will make the top of the list i think it's an achievement uh, in I, terms of i think the cantilever cockpit yeah I, also i think the whole system of drive and steering and having to yeah. so you we you can usually all, have yeah, three well, motors yeah, four motors in a car powering four wheels this thing has two mo- motors powering a single wheel single yeah, wheel yeah, yeah 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 so yeah, you can yeah, imagine yeah. again the unconventionality yeah. plus that whole thing even steers So it again there is to There's talk about there is there a lot everything is engineering sure. of things I, I guess we have a debate to have which yeah, one I makes swear. the top that is again why we are doing this all even we are not comparing but then we are saying that it is in actuality in all reality a very complex project, project wherein the, there's a lot of characteristics on this vehicle that have to, had to, had been designed built and prototype just for this vehicle including the tires also again cet sort of made these tires just for us and for a company that's so old and so such so big as cet they actually told us that this, something like this the tire like this is something brand new for them Yeah. So they, they even they have to build even everything they from have, scratch. Yeah. Even they have to build everything from scratch. It's the first time they're building something like this, a tire that is so tall and profile. Small we profile. call it. It's basically the uh, side wall of the tire that you see. It's for the size. It's very low, and even the engineers were saying that it, there is very high chances that it could come off the bead, this that, and everything. But we actually pushed it to a point where one wheel was in the air and the yeah. tire still stood its place properly. Oh yeah, did not come off. Again, hats off to all the guys who put their efforts into this because they've more than went, uh, gone more than what out of the way, out yeah. of their way and limits and whatever you can call it. So, so what was your qu- interview question when you entered? The, I'm I'm really curious. My, I, I heard you are the only one who got interviewed among. Okay, they came yeah. on board. Oh, I, I mean, he's asking about why didn't he interview? But we basically we took his interview. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. So what took was the question that we asked? Was no. One thing is, uh, we had our own merits, right? Uh, I'm good at design. He's good at engineering. But we wanted someone who's really, really good at the body panels, the body work, and all. And there's one mast uh, engineering masters project of his or design yeah. masters. So yeah, design masters. The uh, so Shelby. I have built uh, prototypes before by myself when I showed them my portfolio, and then from then 
I think yeah, so he, he built a uh, replica yeah. Shelby GT Cobra. Yeah, yeah, built body. I'm curious. From, Can I see? Yeah, uh, yeah you should yeah, see. Yeah, it. It. So, so that was the interview process. Show it to us. He showed it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Our interview, <laughs> even interview <laughs> call out was like, show us what you built. Yeah. Don't tell us about it. Show us what you built. Yeah. So he showed us this, and he was getting into the details of how he has the system of checking asymmetry. Right. When you're building panels by hand, they're not machine made, so you have to make sure the left and right match. And then mirror pieces. You can't just take this and match it there. So you have a system of having coordinates to go left and right match it. And he had this. Like, like, he's the one. So yeah. He's the one. Like he's this. Very he's much a missing. Basically, yeah. I did automotive clay sculpting for specialization in my design course. So there we were taught all That's this. That's a replica. It so looks better. Seriously, yeah, seriously, yeah. like so, something from 1956s. And he didn't so have any measurements. It is from an original vehicle. Uh, Ford was a Shelby. I, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's that. So, so he's, thank you. Yeah. So that's what we wanted someone to be very, very accurate. The, the body panels part is where there's a huge missing link. The movie guys are good with it. They can work with the same materials, but they don't have that accuracy level. They work in inches. inches. Yeah, we want to work in inches and MMs millimeters. Yeah. Like so, as engineers, we are used to working in millimeters. millimeters the huh? carpenters and the craftsmen they are mostly used in inches. inches. Yeah, yeah. So the <laughs> first first time when we actually started working on it, they are coming to us and asking us in inches, and Vishnu is like, no. Millimeters is what we are going to follow. Like, two millimeter cone, they yeah. No, we have to see they, it. They deal with so, measuring the yeah, tapes and you deal with vernier yeah, calibers. Exactly. That's so, the Vish, Vishnu made a little scale for them for them to understand the millimeters yeah, and the Arsha. inches. Yeah, what what Arsha 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 made it. The scale. He 3D printed a little scale. And that, 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 was, that was specifically good. where uh, we had given them 3D prints of the car. Oh, yeah. Huh. At 1 is to 12 scale. So, if the arm is this big, we gave them this small apart because understanding the geometry in three dimensions is hard for them. There are 2D drawings, but there's so many cuts, creases, you know, shapes and all. So the thing is, this table, okay, imagine this table. Yeah. If I, if you have to model this out, by the time you come here, look at things and go that side, a lot of this detail is gone from your head. So, if I can scale it down and give it to you where you can just see yeah. like this, uh, yeah. it's a lot easier it's to like figure. Exactly. It's yeah. it's right handy. It's like turning a model on your computer almost. But these guys can't deal with computer, so it's in their hand. And there's the scale down scale. You put that scale on top, you just multiply it with 12. You, you don't get the original. So, yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what. You can measure things here and the basically the scale is also scaled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you measure with the scale. One inch here is one inch in real life and you go and make it. And they were so happy to just use that scale. We distributed these like candies to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, we gave them 3D prints and the scales and it had become a thing and they liked it. They liked giving the 3D models and all. It had made their life easier. So we were there to basically translate that 3D model of ISOs into language that these amazing craftsmen can, you know, understand and work with. So is it safe to say uh, Boji is one of the reasons the movie got delayed? Hmm. No, Nagi. <laughs> Nagi. No, no, no. I Bougie. mean, ask Nagi. So I would say Buji got made. The functional Buji got made True. because the movie got delayed. Yeah. So oh, we, we had enough. Actually, yeah. we actually right. built a Buji for the shoot. It was a static one, which you can orient it. You can put it on a motion platform and for all the close-ups and the actor interactions and all. Like like we discussed, no, we we were looking at ways to make Buji early on, and then we realized that it's not possible. Like this is just too big and too complex to build it. So and the shoot had to begin. So we went ahead and built static versions of it and the shoot went ahead with it. And then later on, we found uh, with uh, Nagi tweeted to Anand Mahindra and then they introduced us to JM Automotive. And that is uh, where we suddenly realized that, okay, this can be built. Let's start doing doing it. And yeah, because the movie got delayed is the reason that we could build Puji and present it now. So, yeah. So, is there a soul? Okay, I, I think you might not answer this even okay. after knowing. Is there a soulmate to Pravas in this movie? Can't answer. Can't answer. Are there? Is Pravas in the movie? And uh, the exact screen. bond they share, I guess, is something to be revealed in the big screen only. There is a chemistry between them, but that's all we know. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can make good guesses by watching this. <laughs> you guys got a huge team, right, to work on this? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, our then design then engineering team involved, at yes. one point was about eight of us. Okay. Like, we are dealing with all the drawings and all. And mm -hmm. then the actual craftsmen, sh craftsmen, the carpenters. I think we are sort of yeah. uh, reaching like a very thin line between the movie, the yeah. bougie we built for the shoot and the bougie, that physical bougie that you guys saw the right. other day, the moving bougie. So, the, with respect to the moving bougie, it's a collaboration between different companies spread all over India. So, there are uh, uh, composites tomorrow. 
from Baroda across the world, from Baroda across the world, build the big canopy. So even uh, molding that big canopy was an impossible task. So uh, yes. see it obviously the, built the, the machine, the machine, can, the canopy was made in is a custom built custom machine. Built machine. So this is a huge canopy. So the machine uh, we could we couldn't go to anyone just uh, randomly any any thermoformer and get it done because of the sheer size of the thing. So luckily they had a machine that they had built by themselves to accommodate such projects and they ra- rarely use that machine and this is one of the few times that they got a chance to restart that machine and build and it build for it. us. The composites tomorrow from Baroda build the carbon fiber panels and the fire retardant because the battery yeah, yeah. compartment has to be f- uh, fire retardant. You don't want it uh, burning up. So and obviously GM Automotive and Koemoto did all the engineering, all the fabrication and all. Uh, we forged the raw material for the hubless rims. It's aluminium, uh, forged aluminium in China. Got them flown into Coimbatore. Got it manufactured there. See it, built the tires. Yes. They did the tire testing for us uh, on a test rim. And yeah. then they mounted the tires. So even the tires also, if the tires are <coughs> gone, you can't just replace, yeah. mount, mount them again. You've got to send them back to see it. And you've got to mount them on a special machine because they're just so big. So, yeah, the team itself is spread out over some amazing companies with some amazingly committed people working for them and yeah i wouldn't say i don't know how big the team was but yeah i mean that's what there have been quite a few people so the list i could it's definitely possibly the hundreds. Take it. like yeah, i would say about yeah. Yeah, it's a guess right? no, we have the list we have to just count so, it <laughs> next time so to say everyone involved in this project has actually put their heart and soul into this project and everyone individually has been looking forward to this uh, reveal being revealed and being shown to the world now they are free (laughs) now now, now they are I don't know even more excited about the movie I guess yeah yeah. (laughs) so I think this is what was your task I guess Uh, getting people on board without telling what they are getting on board for (laughs) was that the case like you are dealing with the story No, 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 no usually we have a pretty deep diving session like we get an NDA signed by them and then we dive deep into details of it, what it is doing and all. And usually they know what they're getting into. But getting into it after knowing it is the challenge, right? Because, for example, JM Automotive, it's not about just doing the engineering. It's accepting a challenging project like that. Because once they accept it, they have to deliver. And this is a pioneering vehicle in every sense, right? So that itself is something to be, you know, commend, uh, commend them about it. And yeah, the security is quite tight. So we, we are very tight-lipped about it and... Uh, the production and Nagi both want the focus to be on the work that we are doing, not just like putting leaks out or like uh, trying to True. do anything. So uh, that also shows the dedication and the sort of uh, focus that the entire team had into making this work more than just uh, like yeah. s- sharing and spreading yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah. So two technical aspects that I wanted to understand. Uh, one, the pattern on the tire. It looks very uh, integrating. Is the, does it hold any uh, specific scientific uh, it's a long story? Oh, it's a long it. story. So, uh, I think the earlier discussions that you were having with Nagi, uh, that so surprisingly, you bring up that point because uh, the model that we got from Haizu did not have a pattern on a tire. And Nagi was very specific about having a pattern on a tire that looks futuristic, but at the same time. Uh, does not look like a normal tire because yeah exactly the whole point was it shouldn't look like a conventional tire. conventional tire so it was like uh, in the future most likely tires would be obsolete but then tires have to be there you can't have mobility without a wheel without a tire that that has to be there unless it's a spaceship that's floating so there was a lot of back and forth with uh, Nitin uh, the production designer with Nagi and all about what the pattern of a tire looks like so for the movie, we developed a pattern which looks like a chain link. I chain would say. Yeah. Well, so again, yeah. so back to Nagi, he actually had the whole concept clear in his head that it's in a world where there are no roads. Yeah. yeah. So a place where there are no roads and it's off-road everywhere. If you see uh, cars and everything going into the mount uh, snow or into muck or something, they'll always have off-road. a chain link uh, of sort, uh, a metal link of sort on top of the tire, which gives you extra grip in, in such surfaces. So Nagi had that, I guess, in his head and he wanted that kind of a pattern 
but again it, it didn't it, it it didn't it shouldn't have been uh, chain link itself because that's again very conventional the pattern itself has to be like that because the purpose of the tire is exactly that where yeah. it's running off road everywhere sand dust uh, snow whatever and uh, yeah so so that was again, a pattern with respect to the movie okay and then we built the static version shoot everything happened in it when it came time to actually build the tire with seat obviously they like this is not impossible to build like this this sort of a pattern on a mold that uh, is not not easy to do it's it's not possible so that is when for the static for the moving version is where we refine that design so try to emulate it yeah. but uh, refine it a little bit and make it engineering so, worthy to I, mm, priyanka okay so i remember having this discussion with priyanka when the whole tire situation was going on uh, who's going to build the tire what is going to happen about the tire and all of that so what had happened was uh, uh, i found seat and then priyanka was a little uh, not so sure about going with it at that time because she wanted the pattern to be as far as uh, possible similar to the original buji static buji that we have yeah so there was a sort of promise that i made in uh, uh, ambition there to priyanka that oh, yeah, try yeah. and make it 99% as much as possible the same thing oh, sure. and then we reverse engineered everything and then worked the pattern out and then got her to understand that yes this is the closest we can get it's not 99% for sure it's more like a, but no, so uh, she did have that she did put that belief in us that yes uh, you guys go ahead and do this and let me see where where it gets to whatever is required we will support you and push you for it and then we got back to this pattern with which is as close as it looks to the original but performs in reality or properly and uh, solidly yeah so since yeah. you guys tested in several places that pa- did that pattern help you does it hold any practical mm. significance so we uh, the tires itself not just the pattern but tires yeah. itself so we built buji to be driven on the road on the track okay but when you were testing it in coimbatore at the race track we realized buji is a much better off road vehicle so basically the pattern and the tire was helping it perform so much better off road that even for the reveal we uh, th- that was all tarmac that we uh, put uh, truck loads of sand and mud in it to make it into an off road off road track to show it uh, show yeah. it off in so it just feels home in the yeah. dirt it just moves it as alive on the dirt on the track is just going but so. <laughs> we also ended up uh, ruining the track at coast a few oh, times oh yeah yeah <laughs> so the tire was so robust yeah, yeah. 52 it degrees heat it was quite hot the track itself though it's so it's soft now when it gets hot true, true, true. and our vehicle yeah. is so heavy and the tires are so robust that when it's taking sharp turns it's literally just pulling the tarmac out <laughs> i think buji is stronger than buji <laughs> 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 is a, it's it's a earth moving vehicle like earth moving <laughs> <laughs> 6 and a half tons it's heavy it's robust it's strong like a tank I I'm sure this is a joke like we could go through an actual wall and nothing would happen to it but yeah. later later <laughs> last, let's let's see so um, why uh, see when when whenever we look at all the monster like vehicles it has huge uh, shock absorbers like yeah. uh, like they show it it, it is a part of yeah. intimidating part why hub uh, hubless system the whole so there are there obviously there is suspension and all but then that's the thing about building a fut- designing a futuristic vehicle is you want to limit uh, the kind of things that are visible easily over here because it's a futuristic vehicle so we are assuming you hide the shock absorbers you'll assume that it's got some so- other sort of su- suspension system you hide the way it's being steered you can uh, you can uh, get away with something else so a lot of the of buji's design would be to hide the mechanical components so that you don't know how it's working you don't know how it moves oh, okay. and that lends to the futuristic aspect uh, of of the vehicle itself so uh, when you look at buji from the side view you look look at that big hubless uh, rim you don't know where the brakes are right yeah you you don't know how it's steering you don't know where the engine drive shaft fuel tank and all are so yeah that's i think one important the part the surprising part is it came on road when we looked at it it looked something like that and that is something that we have never seen yeah. we, we have seen such prototypes this is the first time that we are looking at and everybody is surprised and mm. curious about it so uh, let, let's get to the interiors it has a steering does it have neutral left right so is it a regular vehicle do you have to learn do you have to take a new license <laughs> so it's a, it's like an ev right it has a forward neutral reverse and it has a steering wheel it has a brake pedal it has a accelerator pedal as simple as any other yeah. vehicle only thing is there's a learning curve to it especially the steering because it's being steered from behind so a there's there's less feedback on the steering wheel itself and also there is a lag 
because you start turning the vehicle in a regular car the front starts turning already in this the rear has to start and then slowly the front will react to it so there's a learning curve to it once you practice a little bit you you should be sorted so and what? apart from that there is a 360 camera there is a reversing camera there is an ace air conditioning system yeah it's well emergency equipped. i mean the emergency kill switch is also we got a remote that you can just shut it off in case it uh, goes out there's a there's an emergency soundproof fire system or, also inside the battery if it's the smoke or anything it activates itself so yeah i mean like harsha said there is definitely a learning curve involved in it but it's a very it's, simple vehicle to drive it's drive. a very surprisingly yeah, yeah. surprisingly surprising simple as a, for as and conventional as it looks it yeah. is not as conventional to there drive there is budji in it we can ask for the money it is pretty conventional <laughs> to drive while driving and especially the front tires it's a it's a very nice experience to drive it because you can see this massive tires moving in front of you and it is so comfortable off road off road yeah just you can see those tires just bouncing and you are just floating in between them. so both yes. the tires so, are independent yeah. independent yeah. like independent yeah. cars yeah. Yeah. yeah okay independent okay. suspension independent braking uh, like combined braking but whatever but on the road when you're going right you can see this two tires going you can tell you can see exactly where it's going it's a nice experience so there's no hood right it's just you yeah. there's a road Suspended and there's a tires, tires. so did you, did you get the chance to look at look at the spark in prabha size when you ex, uh, showed so this vehicle to him oh absolutely so the thing is this is uh, Nagi didn't expect Prabhas to drive it for so long so it was a very welcome surprise that he was so comfortable driving it that he was just going and going he, he yeah the, so it's like the, a kid with a new toy yeah, yeah. <laughs> the night before the reveal we were running rehearsals at Ramoji Film City and they just went on because Prabhas wanted to do it again and again and again and oh yeah we, we went into the like, day yeah we we, we saw sunrise and Prabhas also was I still know. there yeah. <laughs> So did you guys like, had to teach him since it is a new yeah, car? Yeah, yeah. We did have to teach him. Just you know, tell him the few pointers that it has a lag. There is some learning curve. We had to teach him how the interior works and stuff. But then this is very surprising. Okay, so we try to push the vehicle and we go for testing to see. We want to break anything that breaks earlier than later. The Nagi. is on top of us he pushes it even more you know how uh, <laughs> nagi is like a very aggressive driver right so he pushes it even more and we get scared and nagi pushes it i mean prabhas was driving it nagi was scared <laughs> that's how much prabhas pushed the vehicle the one of the tires was in the air when the turning happened during the practice sessions we had to tell prabhas you can take it a little <laughs> slow it is fine <laughs> you can tell that story about nagi saying ki, yeah he's doing a good job like you said oh yeah, yeah so one of the practice sessions uh, prabhas is going and the vehicle the front tire is lifting and is in a lot of stress i'm telling nagi he's pushing it so much that the front tire is lifting off and the nagi is like that's a good thing right <laughs> <laughs> he's like he should push it he was actually enjoying it. i was trying to tell nagi it's a concern and i see nagi is like oh that's a good thing and he was actually happy that prabhas is pushing it and then uh, yeah yeah that's it so uh, what's buji doing now we are curious it's possibly resting in peace after all that uh, uh yeah, oh, adrenaline filled dry ride that it took but uh, yeah it's probably it's also been, it's going yeah, to start on a road show riding up for the next yeah, bit yeah. go go around india show it to different people uh different cities and yeah pro- we probably won't be pushing it as hard as we as did, opening yeah. night as the reveal night But let's yeah. see. Maybe Nagi will come up with something. He'll probably want us to jump off some bridge Depending or something. Depending on what venue and what he finds in this yeah. city, right? Yeah, it might be doing different things also for all. Nagi is on crazy. It's very impromptu. So, you never yeah. know. True. <laughs> so uh, with this vehicle, the there is a small opening in in this segment. We saw animal. They built a whole vehicle to shoot things up. And yeah, today gun. we have a everything is built from the scratch. Do you think the, a new segment will open up in the film industry to build things from scratch with respect to automobile industry? Or I mean, I have an opinion on this. If you see the older movies, right, everything was built from scratch. There's very little VFX. Everything was built in person. There was it was always tangible. Then we went in the segue of you know. making things on green screen and making things digitally but the one of the reasons i was so happy to join the project was i could see that nagi's vision is to he wanted to build everything let it be a gun or a car or whatever in between he wanted to build it in real mm-hmm. and i think that pays off a lot on the screen right like this is a retrospective analysis that we did along with priyanka she was so happy to see all the things built in real because it shows off elegantly on the big screen VFX can do it, but making it in real life is always the better way. Is what I think. Yeah, I mean, from a very general perspective, what Harsha said is absolutely right. Is that uh, you it take do like doing VFX or leaving it for the computer things is not easy. 
Yeah. But it's the easy way out when you're shooting something. Uh, building it, spending the time to design it, build it and bring it on set and use it is uh, is a little bit more difficult, but it, the rewards are a lot more. Yeah. But when it comes to Buji, I definitely think it's sort of Buji is a statement, not just for the movie industry, but for the engineering field itself is that you have the time and you have the money. We have the talent and we have the capabilities to be able to like uh, get make your dreams come true and the movie is a very good niche where it is a very fantasy world and we are very happy that uh, this the kalki 2898 ad sort of gave the engineering world an opportunity to build a vehicle like this uh, an engineer by himself would never have dreamt of such a car it is only because we are building it for a movie yeah, yeah, is yeah. that we, we, we had the opportunity opportunity to, to build the car so so like these guys are saying see uh, industrial design engineers all these guys if they can actually accommodate more such teams into movies i am more than sure that you'll see the quality oh, yeah. reflect when you see the movies themselves which i hope is the scene with the r movie also let's keep our fingers totally, crossed totally crossed and hope you no know, few years ago it shows. somebody would have told uh, i'll do my engineering and i'll fit into film industry you would have believed it now you are doing engineering in film industry i'm, I'm sure i wouldn't have believed it if you would have told me 3 years ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> i swear it just came out as the most random thing but the most satisfying and uh, uh, award rewarding the experience uh, after having done it I mean it's it's not a, a good point that Vishnu brings up it's not a new thing in Hollywood right there are a lot of industrial designers and mechanical engineers who do uh, you know projects in the movies but in their own way like properly planned and well executed or well designed stuff it is new for our industry but again this is exactly what Nagi's vision is right it's not just our department in every department in the movie you see very young and bright minds yeah working on their part that's exactly how we fit in the first place otherwise i i never think you would have made the movie industry to be honest it's because of nagi and his vision that he gave us his opportunity to even show what we can do that's amazing yeah. so let's talk uh, <clears throat> academics how good student were you oh god how back are you going i think i'm ready to go okay with in architecture uh, i really loved doing architecture i was like one of the toppers in my university oh, wow, 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 wow. i was and i have to tell the truth <laughs> okay. no <laughs> but then i it was very hard for me to leave it behind and do something called industrial design because my heart was in architecture into design i was doing very well i had a nice job to do in india then i was like no this is not enough for me i need to get my hands onto something more so i was always an engineer in my head but my qualification is never an engineer so then i did industrial design and my gp was 4 out of 4 oh. again <laughs> remove him from the team <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. too late <laughs> but then that also i enjoyed so much i had a nice job in the us then again my head is like oh, we need to do something more go back to india because in the us you right you only do one job you can't do anything else given your visa situation i was like a marketer and this i want to do more things so i came back to india and this happened so very grateful that move did definitely did pay off my dad was very cross with me that you know why are you mm-hmm. returning to india we have a job there just settle there and whatever that something in common between harsha and me right, is that exactly. i also did my masters in the us and i decided to come back to india and for whatever reason patriotism or whatever i wanted to work from india so uh, that's also good to sort of reach a level here where i can say that hey it was a good decision to come back to india and to, uh, do this and answer the question sir how, yeah. how, so, how, how good were you backlogs <laughs> okay so i don't know i, I was a backbencher i you i used oh, to oh no way you are yeah i used to yeah, bunk used classes to, I, make I fun of fun, fun of the teachers and all but i managed to pass all my exams i wouldn't say i was a topper but i did did well so even i also can't believe 35 it, marks that, it's like <laughs> i would say 40 marks <laughs> <laughs> i was never like Like in the danger zone, but a little above the danger zone. Comfortable. Yeah. So, <laughs> Just yeah. comfortable. But I, I used to do a lot, lot better in the practicals and the engineering labs and those <clears> things. <throat> the hands-on things really excited me and all. And I think for learning anything, the best way is to like learn it by doing it or by watching by like actually physically being doing it. Yeah. Vishnu. Uh, yeah. I I I am a backbencher. <laughs> yeah. Not very hard to believe. <laughs> So, <laughs> very much a back bencher. Uh, in fact, I got a shock pretty early in life—not very early, but early enough in life, in twelfth standard. 
So, so after that, things sort of uh, uh, started balancing out. And then, so I wanted to do engineering. I wanted to be into automobiles. Okay, so engineering is the most straightforward way that first came into my head. But as I grew up, as I was in uh, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and all, I discovered more about design and everything. And I also figured that my math sucks. I can't <laughs> do math. So, and then doing engineering was always going to be a big gamble. <laughs> engineering was always going to be a big gamble. So, I like, no, mind, I want to do automobiles. I can just do design and then from there, I'll see where it goes. But then 12th happened, so I couldn't get into design, this, that, everything. Okay. So, somehow I ended up in engineering. But then I'm thankful for that uh, at this point in life because in going into engineering was what, again, as Saad mentioned, that there was a workshop. I could go into the workshop, do stuff that I was learning here practically, like weld stuff, do stuff on the lathe machine, make stuff for real. And that sort of got my interest back into studies. And I, it was like I wasn't even trying to study at that point. Whatever I studied was enough and I was doing pretty well in college. And uh, design sort of was the next natural stage because I've always wanted to do it. And yeah, that happened. And since then, I guess, yeah, I've... Uh, now I don't feel like doing a job because of all that. <laughs> you dodge the question so well, you are good at this. <laughs> I told you, know, I'm a back yeah, yeah, I've been doing this all my life. <laughs> this question was specifically for all the engineers who are struggling and having backlogs, thinking that their future is no going nowhere. And I'm showing you the proof. As, yeah. as simple as that. You yeah. can be successful with uh, 40 mocks and above. And you can be successful with <laughs> I was not a first bench either. I, was I think in any field, case. hard work and dedication, yeah, and you what being case. true to yourself is more important than marks and all. Marks, I don't know. Nobody's ever asked me for my marks. No, Thankfully, no, yeah. I mean, yeah, and I never had to like knowledge you know. and intelligence are two different things. So, yeah, going yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> Apart from uh, parents, I don't think anybody's asked us for The answer. next generation has forgotten about it. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Luckily. So, so. <laughs> uh, but to finish this question, I think the three, uh, we have our different niches here. We have our talents in different aspects of design and engineering. But I think what is common between us is obviously the love for automobiles. But more importantly, we all love building things. Yeah. We all love getting our hands dirty. Exactly. Getting our clothes dirty. We, you yeah, make a sketch, you have to drive it. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's when that's when the satisfaction is there. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, it's always it's not, not just this. Uh, if there is a chance, I'd like to come down, visit your uh, workshop separately, watch sure, it, sure. and that will be more exciting, I guess. Sure, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We have our own three own workshops. Three own workshops, yeah, and so. that will be super exciting. Thank you so much for inspiring everybody and uh, bringing such a wonderful art piece and a beast to be, a monster to be called. And that's Bucci <laughs> with a cute name. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today. And it's, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>